welcome to another edition of the Above the Bridge podcast. I'm your host, Thaddeus. First thing I want to do is shout out our sponsors. We have Defend Hawaii. They've been our sponsor from the very start. If you go to their website, defendhawaii.com, check out the new drops they have. They got some new stuff for the UH football. They have some new stuff coming out for the fall uh, catalog. Go check them out at their store in Windward Mall called No One. If not, defendhawaii.com, promo code ATV Pod upon checkout. Receive 15% off your entire purchase order. Next, we have IREP Detail Supply. I just washed and waxed my truck using their products, and my truck is looking super brand new. Go check them out if you want to detail your car. They have waxes, polishes, a ceramic coating, anything you need to make your car brand new. Go check it out. They have a, a, a store in Temple Valley Shopping Center in Kahalu. Or you can go to irepdetailsupply.com, promo code ATVPod upon checkout, 15% off your entire purchase order. Next, we have Hawaii Candy Factory, and you've seen their candies everywhere. They're in the cute little packages called NOMS. Go check them out at their website, and it's hawaiicandyfactory.com, promo code ATVPod upon checkout, and you'll receive 10% off your entire purchase order. And last but not least, we have our newest sponsor. It's Medicinal Mushrooms Hawaii. And if you go to their website, medmushroomshigh.com, you can receive 40% off uh, your first tincture of either lion's mane or chaga mushrooms. If you don't know what lion's mane does, it's known to increase energy, focus, memory, and improve your mood in three to five days. Uh, the chaga mushrooms has been known to boost your immune system, fight inflammation, and balance your gut health. I've been taking both of these on the daily. Uh, I put uh, three drops of each one into my coffee every morning, and I've been loving the benefits I've been having from it. These mushrooms are locally grown here in Hawaii. Um, again, go to their website, medmushroomhigh.com, all capitals, ATB pod upon checkout and 40% off your first tincture of lion's mane or chaga. Aloha. Okay, this week, um, my guest is somebody I've known for years. He worked with me at a couple concerts and stuff back in the day. Um, he's running his own production and film company called Cool Films. Uh, Regan Kuali'i, what's up, man? What's up, boys? How's it going? Brah, when I first met you, you was a photographer and one fucking MMA fighter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whole crazy, yeah. Yep. You and you was, you was working with Ray for a lot of different concerts. And brah, yeah. I always admired your uh, work ethic and attention to detail. I mean, we did some big shows and brah, it wasn't easy and... and Plus, you is good fun to be around. So, Hilo boy, huh? Hey, you know, we got to represent the good vibes. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bruh, so how did you um, make your way out of Hilo? Just through, that was when you were competing, huh? Yeah, so uh, a lot of the reason why I moved out was because to fight. Like you said, like I, I pick up fighting like later on, like in my early 20s. and. From there, I just kept doing it, and it was doing well for me. So I was like, fuck, might as well move someplace where it's dope, right? Which was Vegas. And yeah, that was 2013. I never left since. Oh, was that long ago? 11 years, dude. I've been gone wow. for a long time. been yeah. chalking it up. And like, <laughs> it's like, right, it's honestly like Hawaii will always have my heart, but that's my home right now. You know, it's kind of yeah. crazy. To think. How, do, how do you like living in Vegas, though? You know, it took a little getting used to, um, just with the whole, like, the lifestyle was, was okay. Like, I didn't, like, the lifestyle wasn't too, not, like, hard to change to. It was just going from, like, something so green, you know, like, Hawaii, yeah. To, yeah. to, like, a desert. And I'm like, fuck, what is this? This is so, like, okay, I'm just here to work, and that's, that's, that's the mindset I had. So, but, yeah, it was, it, that was probably the hardest, like, part of, like, transitioning was just, the environment you know like as far as like heat it was hot when i moved and moved in august so oh yeah yeah there was there was 
it sucked, but I'm I'm glad I made the move. So you love being in Vegas now? Yes, you know, like it. It there's so. I mean, as far as opportunity wise, it helped me grow, and obviously with with filming, it's it helped me get you know get exposure a lot. So like yeah. The life that I had in Vegas was definitely a lot more than I had back home. You know, like I bartended the first time when I moved out here. Like I, that's oh. what I was doing before I started getting into filming, you know, and it was good money. You know, I had, I had, a, it was, it was nice. I got to experience a lot of shit that I never, you could only like see in movies and stuff, you know? Yeah. So for me, like it was, I loved it, you know, like it was money that I never, never had before. And just, there was so much opportunity and I was kind of addicted to that. Oh, that's cool. And you always had the, that work ethic, but, um, when did you stop competing? Oh, that's been a long time. <laughs> I would say maybe 2016, 2017 was my last fight. And you know, what's so funny about that too. The guy who I last fought, I ended up being his bartender and he was my bar back. Oh, for real? <laughs> yeah. So it was funny. I was like, okay, you might have won that fight, but who's <laughs> who's leveled uh, up? My friend, who's the bitch now? <laughs> <laughs> Grab me ice, cuz. <laughs> hey, give me my ice right now, please. <laughs> People <laughs> don't I, forget. He, he beat me. He beat me fair and square. Like his, and it was it was it was dope because like Back home, you know how fighters are. Everybody's like, for the most part, stand up. You know, like, oh, yeah. every that's how Hawaii culture is. Everything is like, just stand up. So, he was my first person that I fought that wasn't. You know, he was strictly ground. His wrestling was good, and I didn't know how to overcome that. And then, and, and he beat oh. me. But it's so funny how things come full circle, and he ends up being my bar back while I was bartending, <laughs> and I got to boss him around. <laughs> Hey, that's a dub in my book, bro. Yeah, yeah, for real. <laughs> who who gets the last laugh, right? I make. Yeah. I was making not. I mean, not trying to be thick, but I was making more money, and you're my boss. I got the boss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what do do you um still train and move around and stuff? I know you keep in good shape. I see all your videos. You running and riding bike. <laughs> Yeah, basically, dude. Like, yeah, that's all I do now. For as far as to keep in shape, um, I don't know. MMA wasn't, or even like training. Like, I, I, I picked it up along the way. It wasn't something that I did, and uh, mm -hmm. that 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 was me. Like, I played football. Football was my 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 passion. You know, like that was what drove me to my early years. Was like, okay, I'm gonna try to play football in college, and then you know. Obviously, we all dream to go play in the NFL, yeah. but like, so MMA was, was something that came way later or even just training was just way later. It was just, I was just bored. And like, actually the reason why I started fighting because an ex-girlfriend told me I couldn't. So I was <laughs> like, I was like, when we broke up, I was like, yep, that's the first thing I'm going to do was fight. So fighting wasn't, <laughs> wasn't in me, you know, like I was, I played football and I surfed my whole life. That was my oh. only two things that I ever really did. But I loved competing, so I just chose, you know, MMA just kind of, it helped me. It helped me. It brought me to Vegas, which is yeah. what also ultimately led me to what I'm doing today. <clears throat> it's it's a trip, bro. Right? Like, when you look in reverse and you kind of look at the timeline of things or events that happen in your, in your past to bring you to where you are and you kind of connect the dots and it's like, whoa, if I never do that or if I made a different choice for this or if I never try that, I wouldn't be where I am today. It kind of is like destiny. How did you, um, where did you start training when you was in Hilo? So I trained at uh, Penn Training and Fitness and uh, this guy, it was called Boss MMA at the, at the time. I, I'm pretty sure it's still called that. Was that um, Ross the Boss? Yeah, Evan yeah. yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. Was him and, and uh, Shane Nelson and uh, Troy Mandalonis were all like my coaches when I was fighting back home. Oh, rude dog, huh? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So it was like, it's, um, like I said, like fighting wasn't, wasn't, wasn't my thing. It just, I did have training experience when I was young. I did do jujitsu when I was really young, but there was a point in my life where I had to choose and it was football and I chose football. And again, like I started, so that was like when I was 13, when I 
finished doing jiu-jitsu and then i picked up mma when i was 21 oh, so okay. for like a long period of time i didn't do shit like as far as mma wise i just was playing football and then after i graduated i just surfed and like i said an ex-girlfriend told me i couldn't fight so <laughs> first thing i did was go ahead and like you know what fuck this i'm gonna go fight <laughs> and and i kept doing it and it wasn't like again i wasn't doing it to be good at it i was just doing it to say fuck you to someone you know and <laughs> i i turned it i turned out to be okay at it and then i was like well i might as well pursue this and see where it takes me you know it wasn't something i was hoping for but it turned out to be something that was doing well for me at the moment mm -hmm. and again like like you said earlier like how life comes to yeah. play like everything happens for us like like i said and not everything happens for us not to us so like i was supposed to say fuck you to this ex-girlfriend so i could move to las vegas and do what i'm doing today you know and yeah. everything in between you know was meant to happen and that's why like like you said like i'm a strong believer in that you know yeah like everything happens and it was meant to happen for us and it's up to you to to see to see what you can do to to better yourself from that situation yeah yeah and you always had that good like i said before work ethic and right you always had a positive attitude you always was smiling and having fun and right it was just good to be around so how did you even pick up the camera i remember you're you're taking pictures first right well to be honest like i just um, I guess I guess you can say I'm a jock at heart. Like creativity was never a part of my life. Like I I would bring like some stuff around. Like when I traveled, I brought yeah. like a GoPro. But it was honestly like I wasn't really recording. I just recorded like oh shit, I got a GoPro. You know, I might as well put some stuff together. And then I did some snowboarding stuff and whatnot. But honestly, like sports and athletic stuff was what. I was drawn to my whole life. Like yeah. creativity was never in my book. Like nobody in my family, but my uncle actually touches a camera and fuck. He's really good too. My uncle is really, really good at uh, photography. Um, and yeah, like honestly, like if it wasn't for COVID, I probably would have still been bartending or doing something else to be honest. Wow. <clears throat> So COVID happened and that's when you picked up the camera to start taking it. Well, yeah, I just was bored. So it like I went to go look back because I keep telling this story about how I first started, but I okay. never really I I forgot the date. So it was I think COVID happened March 15th or 14th. Yeah, yeah. March, March 17th or March 16th going into 17th. We had like three inches of snow on on our mountain in Vegas. <laughs> and so I was like, fuck, I want to go snowboard, but obviously everything is closed. So I was like, shit, what am I going to do? So I just packed up a bunch of my like snowboard gear. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go hike. I'm going to hike like a hundred yards and then snowboard down, do that a couple of times and should be enough. And as I'm walking out, I see my go, I see a, not like my GoPro I was, I was actually borrowing the GoPro from a friend. I grab it. I didn't even know if it was charged or not. You know, like I just grabbed it. I was like, oh, I might as well just bring this and see, see whatever. And then, so I videotaped me hiking up and then videotaped me walking, like snowboarding down. I did that a couple of times. I took the best shots, edited it on my phone. I was like, oh, that's actually kind of fucking fun. <laughs> so like from that point all the way into like May, I would say, me and my friend Mark Tupas, like who we were both like kind of roommates at the time. Oh, I know him. Just, yeah, 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 yeah. Shout super out proud. to we Mark, were... bro. He's doing yes, good things. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah, he <laughs> is. He is. And super yeah. proud of the dude. So like we were roommates at that time, and we would just go holo holo everywhere. And and I was just videotaping everything, like to the point where him and I would ride. We rode our bikes like almost twenty something miles from where we were living at in Vegas through the strip down to downtown all and this was all like prime covid oh, like wow. it was it was so crazy i actually filmed it i made that was like one of my that was my second video actually that you i made get busted. Like, no like well we just we just rode on the street and, and honestly like him and i were the only 
honestly the only people on Las Vegas Boulevard because oh, that must we have went, been like, sick. It was the it was dope, dude. I wish my camera skills was good then <laughs> as it is now, because I would have got so much fun stuff. But if it wasn't for COVID, then I would have never got to where I'm at today. You know, so yeah. but it, it was such a dope experience to go through the Las Vegas strip. And like I have this again, I think I think this video is on my Instagram still. If oh, I'm not okay. mistaken. I'll pull but, it off for sure. Yeah. But like, yeah, it was it was like the beginning of the beginning of Koo Films. And actually, I was <laughs> it wasn't even Koo Films then. Like Koo Films kind of came later. But yeah, that's kind of how I started. It was just because of COVID and I was bored and there was nothing else better to do. So, and wow. I just record, yeah, it was sick. It was kind of like, again, everything happens for us. And I'm glad that COVID happened because if not, I still would have been in the industry doing yeah. stuff that I don't want to do, you know? <clears throat> yep. I mean, I, I get it, bro. This whole podcast started because of uh, COVID. It was I was like, just like you, I was bored and I had a, a, a dream of making a podcast and Basically, I was being a bitch and never pulled the trigger. And I figured out, brah, like, it, I can talk the talk. It's time to walk the walk. And I got motivated from DJ Hopper Boy. And, brah, like, I know. Hey, how's he back. doing, dude? Hey, his He's, mixes are sick. Bro, dude. the mashup Mondays. Brah, I just uh, got to film his little intro for his last one that he just dropped today. Because that's yeah, my yeah. neighborhood, brah. He, he's walking through. But, brah, he's. Right. I mean, you've known him from back in the day when he wasn't yeah, even yeah. DJing and bro, he's, no. he's definitely built. He's, he has our same work ethic, bro. And he built his yeah. brand and his, his skills from hard work and dedication. And he, he's really passionate about what he does and it shows just kind of like how as individuals, we're all passionate about what we do and it shows, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's it's cool to watch his career, bro. And and I'm a fan of him. That's my little brother. And it's it's a trip to see his success. And he helped me a lot with um my podcast because of the editing. I I yeah. didn't know anything about editing and videos. And when I first started, I had a producer, but he had he got promoted in his uh job, so he couldn't do mm. it anymore. So it was either this thing dies or I gonna learn and do it myself. So I, I'm learning and yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you about some editing stuff in, in a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So you picked up filmy and you started with the GoPro and how did you evolve? Like when you were um what did you start shooting and start taking it a little more serious? Um on my birthday actually. So COVID like so that July of COVID um I was like, shit, this is dope. You know, like I can see myself and I, I've, I've had like a few videos in already since then, like practicing and playing and just honestly, I was just filming all of our shit that we was doing COVID. Like again, me and Mark went to this dry lake bed and we were just doing donuts <laughs> with his <laughs> fucking BMW and just, just filming random stuff. Like honestly, it was probably one of the best times of my life, like during COVID. Oh, yeah. Because there was like, we just enjoyed, you know, like there was nothing we could do. And me yeah. and Mark were fucking living the life. Like we was just doing whatever we wanted to do. Hey, we woke up, we, we ran and then we would go hiking and then we would do shrooms in the mountains and get lost <laughs> for eight hours while this car was still on. <laughs> it was not too, like, like it was probably one of the best times I've had. And it, it helped me grow a lot. And yeah, like on my birthday in July on in 2020 was when I decided like, fuck, I'm going to pursue this full time. I'm going, oh, and so, and, and on July, on, on that same day, I was like, okay, again, I still never had, I still have my GoPro at that point. I was editing on a real program, uh, oh, okay. which is, what were you using? Premiere, Premiere. Oh, I was doing Adobe Premiere. Premiere. So I, yeah, okay. I, I started practice. Like, so my steps was, was like, okay, I really like what I'm doing. I'm editing it on my phone. It's fun. Okay, but I know this is not the program where professionals do it, right? Yeah. And I got to be able to, to learn that program, do what I, I hope to do, you know, like or hope to create and learn that program really well. And so it took me like a few months from like, again, so from like May to July was when I was working with that program. And it was fun. Like I learned it. Yeah. I taught myself. To, everything was taught through YouTube. Like I, <laughs> but I, I, I learned how to edit. I learned how to work my camera. 
oh, through wow. YouTube my first year. Like, so you again, got a new no, camera too? New camera, not knowing what the fuck I was doing. Like I bought a I, I bought a camera after in after like I decided to like take it full time. Like, okay, I'm gonna take it full time, buy a real camera. I bought a real camera not knowing nothing. I didn't know how to work a camera. I only knew how to work a GoPro, which was just basically turn it on and you just point and shoot, you know, like <laughs> exposure, all that extra shit that I I didn't know shit. So I was like, well, fuck, I might as I really liked what I'm doing. So it wasn't hard to go and find out how to learn all this stuff, you know? Yeah. And yeah. YouTube, YouTube was the best thing, like at the point of how we, like learning how to do shit. And, and it's crazy because I feel like even to today, I'm still learning so much. Oh yeah. You know, yep. it's the university and, of YouTube. <laughs> yeah, dude. And, and on it, and it's, it's, it's so dope. Like to see, like, I, I found my passion later in life. And like you said, passion for DJ Hoppa, passion for chef, you yep. know, like chef was always a chef, but I Pono didn't come until 2018, 2017 at the earliest. So it's like, yeah, we found our passion and and we went full on in and we we took the risk because like a lot of ego had to be put to the side for me to pursue this full time, you mm -hmm. know, and I, I was bartending, making decent money. I but I had to take the risk and leave the job. So when I decided to like do it full time. It was a, it was a big risk for me, you know, like uh, and a big risk, not just for month financial wise, but like ego wise, like my girlfriend at the time, like she helped me out a lot. Like she let me use her old car that she had laying around because I didn't have to do a car payment. You know, like it was a yeah. part of the risk that there was a part of the shit that I had to, to, to deal with in order to be successful. And and like I like you said, like every everything happens for a reason, you know, like it was meant to happen that way, because if not, then I would have never taken the risk. You know, and like you bet, I bet on yourself, the risk. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And so it's like it's it, it was crazy like to see like all the shit that I had to do to get this far it was like it was a lot of taking the pride and ego out of it. You know, like nobody wants to say they have their ex their 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 girlfriend's car that they're using that's not, you know, like it's not the best shape. It's not what a lifted Tacoma like most people like <laughs> back home or anything, you know, like we all like the nicer things in life, but I knew what I wanted to do, which was filming at that point. Wow. And I was like, I don't give a shit about anything else. I'm gonna focus and get what I need to do to get done and to be successful. <clears throat> Bruh, that's um that's an amazing story. And and a lot of a lot of success happens with uh humbling yourself and uh, starting from ground zero keeps the fire and the hunger and like you said learning is fun bro and like for me i'm learning how to video edit and i'm having the funnest time learning because i've never learned something new in in years so like i always say my mom's uh tombstone wh where she lays to rest she was an mm -hmm. educator and her heading on it says you learn every day until you go to heaven and I felt like I wasn't really taking that into reality because I wasn't um, motivating myself to learn new things. And Brad, recently it's been that way. And Brad, it's, like you said, it's fun and exciting. And when you learn something new and then use that tool, it's fucking dope. You know what I mean? When it works, right? When you see yeah. what you learn. And, and again, it's not, it doesn't always work the first time, but when you figure it out, it's like probably one of the most rewarding things you can ever have. Like yeah, when I figure out, and that's why I kind of like, I like running through obstacles in a sense. Like I like when obstacles come along because fuck is an opportunity for me to get better. You know, yeah. like it's an opportunity for me to fucking figure out my weaknesses that I have and become stronger you know, as a person or as a videographer or yeah, like just as a person in general, you know, like it's the struggles is super fucking important that I realized because when you're given something so easily, it's easily to be forgotten too. You yeah. know, like, yeah. like when you work for something, it sticks in your brain so much harder. It's like, fuck, I had to go through all of that shit to get where I am today. It's like, Fuck that! I'm not gonna give it up that easy, you know. Oh yeah. But when you don't work, when something comes to you so easy, like oh fuck, you know that another opportunity like that can come around. It's okay, you know. Like you don't really care about it. You're not really motivated to to continue it or whatever because it came easy. But 
that's why like i feel like obstacles is probably the most important thing someone can go through in life you know to be better yep. as a person in their career or anything they're trying to be better in <clears throat> troubleshooting huh so hey, what it trouble <laughs> troubleshooting <is> <laughs> yes yes <laughs> troubleshoot the system hey who lead the system <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so what it what was like your first like gigs that you were shooting and like oh this is gonna start paying me and you started getting really into it like what were you shooting at that time that was before you started doing work with um chef huh? mm. well in the beginning to be honest i was doing it for fun like even after i decided to take it full time like i was okay. like i still need to i still need to enjoy this so me and this one mma fighter is ty Gwerter, and he was basically like we we helped each other out at that point where he needed content obviously and most fighters always need i mean not more every fighter wants content right yeah they it helps them get sponsorships it helps them get better pay in their in their in their contracts because they have a following so he allowed me to come and follow him pretty much wherever he was at Addiction Couture, and that's how basically I grew to do take it professionally. Like I, I was filming, excuse me, I was filming his fight camps, and oh, he wow. actually yeah, brought me along to a couple of his fight weeks that he uh, had when he was fighting for Bellator. Oh, and okay. so, right. like, I got to experience like a full fight week with a decent, you know, like it was it was a cool experience and whatnot. So, like, yeah, technically that was my first professional like gig that's when i started doing it with the new camera that i got and the editing program and really taking it taking it serious trying to get better each time um but it wasn't paying you know like but that would to me i consider that like my first professional gig like okay. regardless of pay like before chef right and yeah and whatnot like i had some other paying gigs throughout like but it was like it was like pennies at at at, at that time you know and but yeah. i was just so grateful like somebody was willing to pay me for something that i was still kind of learning yeah. but they saw something in me and i was like fuck when people did that like it motivated me more to do better you know like fuck they believe in me you know like i kind of let them down i kind of yeah. let like if, for example chef down because they believe in me you know like they're willing to spend their hard earning money to put into something that they technically don't need, but it helps their business and, you know, yeah. and, or help their, their image as a fighter or whatever it is. So like, I took that to heart, like they're willing to pay me and, and for their hard work. Cause at that moment I was like, fuck, I'm struggling. Right. I'm uh aspiring videographer, content creator, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And so any kind of money was like, fuck, I was so grateful for, you know, and, and whatnot. So yeah, like for me, like that was like my first professional gig that I took seriously in my head was was when I was filming my friend Ty. <clears throat> oh, that's super cool. So you you were saying like be prior to that, you didn't really think of yourself cr creative, like you didn't have a creative uh aspect. Mm. While you were starting to get into it, did you develop that creativity? And when did you realize like, oh brah, I'm kind of creative, I'm kind of learning this and I can create my own image images and kind of put together videos how I see would look cool. Like that's when the creativity comes out. Huh? Honestly, it only happened like probably in the recent like few months. Oh wow. And yeah, like and to this point, like I still feel like I have so much to learn. So <laughs> like I don't I don't I'm my worst critic, honestly. Yeah. Every single video that I see that I make, I always find something wrong. Yeah. And and so it wasn't like it wasn't finding my creativity ness. Like it was more just wanting to be better than I was yesterday. Yeah. Like yep. every single video that I made, I was like, fuck, I like make it better. Like <laughs> I could make it better. I fuck, I I gotta fit or or if I didn't know how to make it better, I was like, fuck, how do I make it better? You know what I mean? And so like the creativity just comes out naturally because I just want to be better than I was yesterday. Like yeah. 
I was again. I was never a creative person. I never had. A, I never took art in high school. I never yeah. did any kind of creative stuff. But like I was your typical jock throughout high school, throughout even after high school. But it was something that I enjoyed doing. It's I saw that it made people smile, made people feel good when I made videos like that, and it just made me want to do it more. Just because like it was something I loved doing and. Like I really like a, a quote that's been passing around like in my head a lot and I've been seeing on social media is like find something you love doing and doing it for free. And mm -hmm. that's basically what I was doing in the beginning, right? Like I was doing it because I, I actually love doing it. And I still do. I still do love doing it. But now people pay me for it, you know, and, yeah. and, and it's dope it's dope. To, I still humble myself like and see like, oh shit. To where I am today, like I never expected it, you know, and yeah. And so, like, that's why, like, I'm not a, I guess I can I say I am becoming creative. Yeah. But I'm more driven to be better than I was yesterday. And oh, I see not, what you I'm mean. Not, yeah, I'm not trying to be the most creative person. I'm not trying to be the best videographer. I'm just trying to be better than I was yesterday. Like, I'm trying to make a better video next time, each time. And having that mentality will only come with success, you know, because you're not yeah. trying to make a lot of money you're not trying to do this you're just trying to be better yep. and that's and that's what drove me each time or even like when i i don't really like i look up to a lot of people and i'm never i, I don't get really envious because i like i want to learn what they're doing you know like oh yeah. shit that looks sick i want to know that like i want to be able to learn that you know like it's it just for some reason i just i'm so addicted to learning my craft like I don't, I don't have no ego to it. You know, I don't have any kind of like spite to anything. I just, I just want to learn. That's and the, it's, and it's, it, and it's, it, and, it's a simple way to live because you're just um pretty much competing against the person you were yesterday. Yeah. It's the people, the person, <laughs> the guy you see in the mirror, that's, that's the only person I care about as far as trying to get better. You know, like I'm not trying to yeah. beat anybody because there's enough to go around. You know, there's yeah. so much, with social media, as long as the internet is up, fuck my, I got a job. <laughs> my yeah, job, my sure. job, is, my job is secured for sure. Yeah, like, me too. <laughs> the, day, the day the internet goes down, then fuck. I guess I gotta start building walls or building houses or something. But at <laughs> the moment, cars, like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we we carry for now. You know, we carry yeah. at the moment. But yeah, no, dude, it's just just wanting to be better. You know, not not to be better than someone, not to be bring down anyone just to be better than myself that I was, you know? Yeah. So how did you link up with, um, with Gene, Chef Iapono? Because, um, you guys seem like on perfect match with the same real vibe and the same fucking work ethic and pretty much the don't give a fuck. I'm trying to fucking be better and be good for other people, bro. I, I like his, his vibe and and you guys kind of match so you guys seem like you guys match together with uh leveling each other up but how'd you even link up with him so i knew chef pretty much since i've been in vegas like awesome. we would see each other out we had like similar friends in in, in circles and whatnot um and Boy, and we became friends on instagram and we okay. came and we became friends on instagram um then obviously COVID started happening and I started creating videos and he saw it, you know, and he, and I went to go visit him when he opened Ipono and in Cali. So when, yeah. So oh, like nice. I saw him doing his thing in Cali. I was like, at, again, the same girl that, that I was with at the time. Like I was like, babe, we got to go to fucking Cali. My friend making it, he has this whole, this Hawaii restaurant and it's fucking the, the food looks bomb. I never tried it yet, but the food looks bomb. I was like, we got to go. So I actually went to go visit him during COVID. And you know what's so funny? I actually had COVID when I went to go to his place. I couldn't take <laughs> shit. I couldn't take <laughs> shit, dude. I was so mad. So the one time I made time to go see Chef during COVID, it was when I had COVID and I couldn't taste <laughs> any of his food. I was so mad, dude. I was You're so like, what's mad. the hype, bro? I cannot like, taste nothing. Fuck. No, like, I couldn't, like, I knew there was, I knew the food was good, just, you know, like, <laughs> what? I was like, fuck, I cannot taste nothing, you know? Like, what oh. the fuck? So it was funny, like, I had COVID and I went to go visit him. Like, I had, a like, a trip planned at that time. And so we went, 
I went there and I, you know, like, <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, everything good, bro. Everything good. I was like, fuck, babe. I never taste nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but I know it's good. I know it's good. I know it's good. But yeah. And then, so we had a conversation that same day. He's like, hey, dude, like, I see you doing video, dude. Like, oh, that's kind of cool. And then, and then I was like, oh yeah, yeah. I just play around, you know, just doing whatever. That was just with my GoPro. And so fast forward, I think maybe to like that winter when I started doing more stuff with Ty, he actually hit me up and he brought me out. He brought me out for his uh, grand opening of his Costa Mesa location. Okay. And so we did our first video then and we just kind of grew a relationship until like maybe like a year and a half ago when I started working with him full time. And um yeah, and basically we just been grinding together since since I would say as yeah, 2019, late 2019, early 2020 is when we started like together more full time and yeah, basically we just been working together since. <clears throat> wow. So it's like what you said, somebody seen something in you and believed in you and yeah. knew knew he could grow with you and bra, you guys yeah. Your guys' content is next level. For one thing, uh, Chef is probably the most perfect guy for being front of the camera. Like he, it is, makes my job easy. Brah, he get action. <laughs> it makes my job easy, and that's why, like, I always say, and people like compliment the video and this and that. I was like, well, it takes two to tangle, you know. Like, yeah, if it wasn't, if it wasn't for his personality, his experience in the culinary industry, and his his knowledge, because bra, like. You can talk that much shit. You got to have proof to back it up, right? And oh, yeah. It's not shit. It's truth. You know, like, he, he's talking real facts. And and like you said, like, that's why we gravitate toward each other. Like, he might be more open to speaking the way he does in front of a camera, and I'm not. Yeah. But our mentality are, are the same. You know, like, we that, and that's why we, we, we get along so well, because... It just it clicked, you know, and yeah. so then I think that's that's about probably a lot of our, our success is that we're not just good at making stuff. We 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 can have that connection, you know, as, as just like homies. <clears throat> yeah. So when you guys come up with your video concepts, you guys sit down and try storyboard it and map it out or talk about it, or you guys just straight shoot from the hip kind. <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> Our best shit is honestly from the hip. Yeah. And our like honestly, yeah. Like, you know that Yelp video that we just posted? Um Yeah. That, <laughs> I reposted that was, it. That was hilarious. That was on the fly, dude. And that was actually a long time ago. That was oh, for real? Oh, yeah, that was over a year ago. And oh. <laughs> it so quick story about that. That video got taken down randomly for no reason. He didn't get a notification. He didn't get anything saying that, oh, your video has got taken down. He went on Instagram one day and the, the video was just gone. Oh, like wow. it had like 300,000 300, views at that time before it got taken down. And so we were like, fuck, just repost it. You know, like <laughs> nothing's wrong with like old footage. And, and at that point, like we had so much content out that people probably forgot about that Yelp video. Yeah. And so that one was honestly... Hey, he's like, record this. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, okay. So I, I'm starting to film. I mean, I kind of had an idea what was going on, right? Like it wasn't, yeah. just, but he was like, okay. Like when he approached me with that idea to make a Yelp video was, and honestly, to be, I don't, I don't, I think I may have told him this, but I honestly wasn't happy with that video. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't happy. I was like, fuck, you know what? I just got to create something and put it together. But yeah, it he's like, like, you can call him back again. <laughs> <laughs> it was like I just gotta create, yes, because that's how that's how that's how we shoot. A lot yeah. of our shit is is raw, like just when we're there and how he feels is when we shoot, and and that's what I like about it because it it doesn't just like it's not just real, but it also challenged me creatively. Like I gotta be able to figure out how to put unplanned stuff together and to make and it make right, it look you know, clean, to make it flow, yeah. to make it look good and. And it's been a trial and error since we started, but, but yeah, you know, it just, it just works together. And, you know, we've, I feel like we've got our flow, like we'll give, we'll bounce ideas off each other and 
again, every a lot, 90, I would say more than nine, like I would say 95% of the stuff that we do is on the fly. Like we have an <laughs> idea going into it, but what is being said, what is, what is being like shown pretty much is on the fly. Is it easy to do or you get planning? Okay, say them again or, or redo or like, what was that take two? Oh, yeah. Take yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Some, sometimes, you know, especially with the dialogue now that, again, in the beginning, we were learning each other. So I wasn't able to like, like, hey, I think we need to redo that again. You know, like I didn't yeah. want to be an inconvenience, you know, like. Oh, I see what but you mean. Now, but now I see how me asking him to do the right way. And I guess you can see the engagement, the likes and all that stuff of like, okay, yeah. me getting it right before is only going to help. And yeah we built that confidence between each other where we could help each other like both, you know, like even him, he a lot, like we created this, vi like, again, this is, this, this video won't be posted until later, but I was just making a video for myself in the back. This just happened like two days ago and he was watching me make it the video and he's like, I got an idea. And then, so we added what we added to it and it be, and it became, it was like, Oh shit, this video is going to be sick. <laughs> And I uh, honestly, I can't wait to release that video because that's also going to be big news for the brand oh, nice. um, with Ipono and, and stuff like that. But like, that's how it works with us. Like sometimes it's a lot of his idea and I bring his idea to life. And there's sometimes where he needs inspiration and that's where I come, you know, and it, it just it's it's probably one of the better duels I had, you know, like oh, and yeah. that's why I've been with him for so long. It's not just because it works. Mm -hmm. Right, like he take care. Like he, yeah. Like he, he might have a punk ass attitude on 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 Instagram and whatnot, but bro, like the guy really cares. He really takes care of the people he has in his circle. Like we was just at dinner tonight, um, for his whole front of the house cooks and stuff like that, and it wasn't like at the cheapest place. He we took he took all us out to Nobu tonight, and oh, wow, and like he had more than ten like of his workers, but that's how much he cares. Like he may seem like the hard guy and, uh, and like, don't give a fuck attitude, but he's equally as caring. He's equally yeah. as like giving. And I mean, Nobu ain't cheap. Right. So it's yeah. like, he, he really cares about his, 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 his the people that, because without his circle, like he said tonight is none of this would be where it's at, you know, like, so, and, and that's, that's a lot of why, like, it's not hard to work with him, you know, cause he just as you know, like he has that good side of part of him too. <clears throat> yeah, he he definitely um opened up to me about how he was struggling when he first was um starting his restaurant and with his mm -hmm. hard work, dedication, and he built it, bro. And let, just like you, bro, he gambled on himself, and he told me he had to sell his chain, and bro, it's, it's just I like hearing those stories. It's inspiring, and and yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it resonates well with local people because he he's he's real as fuck, but he has aloha, and mm -hmm. it's um it's hard to find people like that. Everybody's trying yeah. to blow smoke up people's ass or trying to um use people to to gain gain something for themselves. He's just real, and that's how that's how you always been too. But your guys' videos have been blowing up, and yeah. It's is it helps the brand, like you said. Any, we're in a time and age where social media has become a staple in marketing, and mm -hmm. what you guys are creating and doing is what's getting his brand being built, noticed, and his personality is coming across, and your creativity is being shown. Where do you see this thing going, bro? Like, how? What do you what do you see the future of this? thing with with him and you as well as you and and whatever uh endeavors you want to further your videography like i said the earth that video that we that we had like mistakenly just come together yeah. like ipono is not just going to be uh like a local town name ipono will be something that's worldwide like worldwide for sure and at this point, um, yeah, like there's so much good news to be shared, but obviously that's not me to share. You know, it's yeah. when it's in time, time in time. But yeah, yeah. 
but to me there's there's i don't think there's any limit and like like he's been saying in his videos like there there is that local food there in in vegas that 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 ha like that is good you know like they have like a solid local food like place in like but what we're bringing not just to las vegas but what we're, what we're gonna bring to everywhere we go it's more than just food you know it's more yeah. than just food it, it's the vibe it's 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 the culture it's the attitude it's everything like we we have and that's why like it's not hard to be around him because he has so much ambition and so much yeah. like drive to to want to like honestly take over and we're not trying to like shit on anybody else but we're here to take over and it's and the stuff like again the stuff that we we we've, we've we're, we have planned and all that stuff it's i don't see any other people doing it not just in 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 las vegas but anywhere anywhere there's no like to me like i don't think there's any local food spot doing what we're doing and what we're about to do anywhere else. And again, there's so much other like reputable good spots back home. We're not shitting on anybody. We're not shitting anybody anybody in Vegas. But um but yeah, fuck zippies. <laughs> bro, that video had me dying, bro. <laughs> yeah, I know you yeah, guys yeah, got yeah, a lot yeah. of backlash for it, but bro, you're still being real. But you know <laughs> the and the, the shitty part about it is it's like a lot of people miss the miss the message of that. Yeah. It, so, and I'm I'm glad we get to talk about this because I get to share it too. In in, in more recent events, is like, chef is going. To, we're going into a casino. We're not going to be affected by zippies. We're going to have the traffic of a casino, so we're not worried about that. Nor do we need a casino to create that traffic. We we've been creating what we've creating, and the traffic is just coming. You know, mm -hmm. and and Vegas won't won't be any different. Honestly, I feel like Vegas is going to be so much more of an animal than Costa Mesa is, and a lot of people are not ready for it. You know, and but the whole message with the Zippy thing, it was there's so much small local businesses that are on the outskirts of you know of a casino and that rely on local business. You know, like just purely local business. Yeah. Um, Zippies had opened up a location already, right? They're or they're planning, they're about to open up a location, but that location is going to be the hub for multiple locations that they're opening up in Las Vegas. I see. So they're trying mean. to like do one chain. Every, they're trying, yeah, like a chain, just like back home. And again, Chef is not going to be. We're we're not going to be affected by it because we're not a part of the local or we're part of the local food scene. But we're in a casino, so. We're going to get traffic no matter what, you know, from yeah. guests waiting and, you know, all that and whatnot. But when we made the video, they only announced their first location. And Chef already said in that, I think pretty much in that video, he's like, yeah, they're planning to take over. They're planning to open multiple spots. So us as local people, we're all about convenience. Even the way we talk, we shorten yeah. everything up. You know, like <laughs> everything is shortened up. So imagine like, okay, you got this one spot that you really like to go to before that was fucking good, whatever, whatever, but you're lazy. Yeah. And there's a fucking zippies down the road. Yeah. Now that small business that only has one location, but zippies has 25 locations in, in Hawaii that's owned by one person. Yeah. And one family, which is okay. Like good for them. Hey, they, they found the recipe. They figured it out. We're not hating. But he's fighting for those small businesses. I see what you and mean. And some of those small businesses was talking shit. You know, like they were like against him and saying that, oh, this is not porno, this is not whatever. I'm like, right, he's talking, talking shit. Guys. Yeah, but he, he's, <laughs> he's like, bro, he's not going to be affected by zippies. He's going to be in a casino. Yeah. And, and plus, it's a local small people, business. yeah, local people visiting Vegas. They can go zippies anytime they like. Like local people that's going to Vegas to cruise in Vegas, they are gonna wanna try your guys stuff because they cannot get them here in Hawaii. We can get, mm -hmm. I can go like two minutes and get zippies. I can get them freaking DoorDash to my house in like right. an hour. It's it. 
it's uh exclusive. I cannot I cannot call and get iPono in Hawaii. Right. I gotta right. fly to California or, or Vegas. You know what I mean? So the local people are gonna wanna go there because they can't get they can't right. get it here. You know what I mean? And and it's crazy to think too because when Chef made that video, they only announced their first location. They already already announced the second location in in uh in Las Vegas. So imagine oh, wow. that's they haven't even opened up their first one and they announced the second one. Oh. So now it's like okay, yeah, you're right. Chef was talking shit about Zippies. Yeah, for the people who live in Las Vegas, don't get to experience Zippies a lot. So they're gonna go to it, right? Yeah. It's vice versa, right? You're you're coming to Vegas to try something different. But now that Zippies is here, not all the locals just want to go there because they never had Zippies in a long time. Yeah. So what about these other small mom and pop local spots that yeah. rely on local people that help them survive? You know, like again, yeah, there's enough for everybody to go around and eat, but when they don't go eat at your place and then what? When you're not yeah. able to pay for your food and then what? You know, pay for your rent because there's a zippies down the road that's taking all your business. Yeah. So it's like, okay, yeah, like you thinking there's enough until when you don't have enough for yourself, right? And then all like, oh, okay, fuck, what I gotta do now? Oh shit, it'd be... maybe chef was right, or maybe chef was wrong, and you don't give a fuck, and you're glad that zippies took you out of business. Then cool, <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's that's you. You know what I mean? That's that's all on you. That has nothing to do with us. But it just like. That's why I follow him. You know, that's why yeah. I, 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 I am with the, with the Ipono team is because what he's saying and what he believes in is like real values. Like he wants local businesses, even in Vegas to do well, you know, like yeah. he wants them to do well. And if Zippy's was like a franchise, which is not right. It's all owned by one family. Then, okay. Like people who are locals or, or whoever it is are able to make some money, like fine. But they're there, to, they're there to take, yeah. yeah, they're they're there to take all of Vegas in every corner. And that's why like they already announced their second location before they even opened their first. Yeah. And it's just a, like the chef was said in the Zippy's videos, like they're not here to just open one spot, they're here to open multiple spots. Yeah. yeah. And that's only gonna affect local businesses, you know, like on the street, you know. So it's yeah, like that's like a lot of his craziness that he talks about, a lot of the, the, the people think it's like being an asshole is the truth, you know? Yeah. It's the real truth. And it's, 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 it is crazy. Some people don't see it. <clears throat> well, I mean, time will tell. And like you said, he's, you guys are um leveling up your guys' selves and you guys are changing the game and, and you're not even changing the game out of, uh, um, maliciousness it's just trying to be better than how you guys was yesterday right you guys been coming to oahu a lot and filming like a kind of a cool segment what has that been about so the whole term hawaiian food yeah or yeah. hawaiian barbecue has been thrown a lot uh, around especially up here you know and up here a lot of people mistake what hawaiian food is and what hawaiian barbecue is and so the whole concept with this Hawaii street food tour, which is the term that he created, which is something that has been reached recently. Like you never, us, when we grew up, everything was local food or Hawaiian food, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. we're going to have Hawaiian food, chicken katsu. Yeah. We go, we go to the Hawaiian, we go to the Hawaiian restaurant downstairs and down the road and get Hawaiian food, which would be chicken katsu or like fried noodles, all that kind of stuff. That's not yeah. Hawaiian food, right? Yeah. So, yeah. The Hawaii street food tour was to educate people on why it's called Hawaii street food and why Hawaiian food is not chicken katsu. Yeah. Why Hawaiian food is not kaubi, not meat jun, all the shit, basically Asian, you know, like 90% of what people think Hawaiian food is Asian yeah. and it's, it's crazy to see. And so that Hawaii street food tour thing was basically that with our creativeness and just making Honestly, we just make any kind and we just run with it. <laughs> yeah. And you guys yeah. filming, like those films have been uh, educational, but fun as well. And you guys throwing shine on local businesses here in Hawaii. You know what I mean? And so it also shows like, see, he's not here to put people out of business. Like, fuck, we could probably come to Hawaii and do successful too, right? Like oh, yeah. we've, we've, cre we've created uh, 
a, he created his brand and he has a brand you know it's not just food like his 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 videos his attitude everything comes with it and that's what people like you know it's not just his food his food is to me probably the best local food i've ever had you know like yeah a hawaii uh, let me get it right the best hawaii street food i ever had and and on top of that it's just like he brings a professional culinary uh expertise to it you know like he doesn't just make your typical beef stew patelli stew or like kalua pig and all that kind of stuff like he innovates and it's like it's fucking different you know and that's what hawaii needs you know and i feel like that's what like to change the game to elevate it because it's been the same shit ever for so long you know like yeah. we go to hawaii hawaii places it's been just the same stuff you know what to get from a hawaii place terry chicken terry beef kalbi local mocos you know like yeah when you go to a spot you don't know what you're getting you know and <laughs> But you know, and but you know, it's something from like with flavors from Hawaii, and a lot of it is still Hawaii traditional food. Like he made this Hawaii, uh, his uh, the Royal Hawaiian special he made the other day, which had lao lao, kalua pig, lomi salmon, chicken long rice. So, like, he still stays true to like the Hawaii stuff, but he puts his flavor on it, you know, and that's and that's uh, awesome. and that's why, like, I feel like it's probably not probably it is the best Hawaii street food that I've had in. Since I've been, you know. <clears throat> so for creativity wise, when you're doing these things, how much input do you get in um for the, for those kind of uh projects? As far as input from chef, or for for the film itself. Honestly, like it, like again, it's a lot. Sometimes it's me running it, and sometimes it's him. You know, like yeah. it. It depends. Like it all depends. Like sometimes we'll, I, I will be just blank. Like, fuck, yeah. what are we gonna do? Like, what is, like, what is the direction? And then he's like, I got it. Literally, that's all he will say. I got it. And so <laughs> I was like, okay, I, I turn the camera on, and then we just roll. Cool. And then once he starts going, and I start getting going with it, like, okay, maybe this is what we'll add, or maybe this is what we should take out, or because now excuse me we, we do we do have a lot of retakes now you know just to uh, get it right to get yeah. it right so it sounds good it's not you know like everything is professional because that's what like, that's what we got to treat ourselves as professionals you know so at that point like we just it just kind of comes to us you know <laughs> and it's funny like there's like i said there's days where it's all on him and i'm like fuck okay as he's talking i'm like now i'm getting the idea i just let him flow and there's days where it's me, you know, like I said, and we just kind of figure it out together. <clears throat> That's cool. So from moving forward, like, how do you see your skills um, getting better and, and transitioning into the future? Like for video and also editing, like, what do you want to try to capture? And like, how do you want to do things better? Or you're, cause I know you're saying you're still learning, so you yeah. you must have a vision how you want things to be in the future. I so my 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 dream like job would be it was to do like long form documentary, especially mm -hmm. like National Geographic. Um, not more so like the animals, but more so the cultures, like <laughs> going to indigenous places like where people haven't been in years or haven't even actually interacted with like other people and I get, I get this passion from like our culture as Hawaii people there's not yeah. enough there's not enough out there you know that to show I mean there is you know but I want to add to it I want to yeah. add more to our Hawaiian culture and and like I see myself getting into that kind of style like more of a documentary style because that's that's my passion I love to tell a story you know like I love to talk stories and I don't call myself a, a director or anything. I'm just a good storyteller. You know, like I just like to tell stories and like the stuff we do with chef and the stuff I do with other people. Like I work with this guy named Mahi, you know, he, he's also great to work with and. and oh, the whatnot. singer. So, I know him. Yeah. 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 So the he's, biggest he's, singer ever met, right? He's yoked. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> For real. Dude. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, like it's 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 dope. Like I just tell their story, you know. Like I'm 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 a, I just enhance their storytelling. Like I don't think I'm 
I honestly don't even think I'm a videographer or cinematographer or whatever terms there is. I'm just a, I just like to tell a good story. And I think that's what drives me. And that's what I want to showcase is like my ultimate dream job would be like a National Geographic job with yeah. going to like cultures that enhances and like to show like the world. Like, and honestly, the first video or documentary or whatever it is like to show as far as culture would be like a Hawaiian documentary. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is or what it will be, but that would be my first like big thing that I want to capture is something to do with Hawaii to educate, you know, to educate people about the history of Hawaii or, or even what, what's going on now with Maui, you know, like maybe yeah. that, that's that's my calling something to do with that, you know, and, and whatnot. But at the moment, yeah, like, honestly, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think I don't want to set my expectation for myself. You know, like I yeah. feel sky's the limit. I feel like just, just like, exactly. Like I, like my the mentality chef has with like taking over like that's what I'm trying to do with my career, like I'm trying to take over like I'm trying to create a big company and big business to where I can disappear. Like I don't, so, I don't, I don't, I don't want to. I, I that's why I like being behind the camera so I don't got to be in front of it. Like yeah. this whole thing right here is like <laughs> this is totally out of my comfort zone, and that's why I talk a lot. <laughs> nah, it's and I'm perfect, nervous. Bro. I talk a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, but uh, that's one of the main things I wanted to hear, bro. I wanted to hear, wh which I kind of already knew you're not going to ever be complacent, but you do have goals and dreams that you'll start checking off those boxes and that'll keep you hungry. And like you said, le uh, leveling yourself up on the daily. And bro, I'm super uh, interested to see how you take this career. I'm already stoked and like when I first started watching your stuff, I was like, oh, that's cool. And then to where it is now. And it's like, bro, you leveled up immensely. And to, to even think how it's going to be in two, three years and what you're doing in two, three years, bro. I'm, I'm excited to see it. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan and I'll be watching, but. I appreciate the, that, bro. Bro, it's the same work ethic you always had. And. I I wanted to ask you before we go is um do you ever not to um not to get stuck in a rut or to get complacent but do you ever look back at your older videos and watch them and be like bro I literally have grown so much from that to where I am now and like do you do you get proud of yourself bro do you do you feel like bra I know I'm going to be better, but as of right now, I'm proud of what I've done thus far. And, and you know, honestly, that's something that I got to work on because <laughs> yeah and no, because I saw where I got myself to today and I, I fuck, I cannot wait to see what's going to happen <laughs> in yeah. the next. So, bro, you know, honestly, I've been full on like doing this shit for two and a half years. Like COVID is when I started picking up and doing shit. And so I never expected to be where I'm at today. I never yeah. expected any of this shit. And I'm like, <laughs> fuck, imagine what I'm going to do in the next couple of years. What imagine what I'm going to do in four years, six years, in 10 years. Like, fuck, if I get this, I not if I have this same worth ethic, like it, when I, when I hear people like my friends say, like, fuck, it's so dope. Like, you're not the only one. And honestly, like, there's been many times where I wanted to quit. Like, yeah. fin financially wise, it was suck. It sucked for a while. <laughs> like, I took a risk. And I'll, there's been many a times where I was like, fuck this. Bartending was way easier. You know, bartending yeah. was way easier. And but every time, like, I felt that, I met someone or I got in contact with an old friend or whatever it was. And they're like, fuck dude, what you're doing is really dope. Yeah. And honestly, those are upon like upon what chef does and what he motives they need to be better. Like it's the people like that, that help me to stay doing what I'm doing. And like, cause, and even till today, like we as human beings, we all have our ups and downs and it could just be daily ups and downs. Right. But if it wasn't for like, Shit, I would I would never have thought I'd be on a podcast tonight, you know, like 
in a million years, like doing like not even like, but I never expected to be where I'm at. And so I'm so grateful for it all. And, and that's why like, I'm only, I'm, that's why I can't stop. Like, yeah. honestly, like I'll, a lot of people, I don't show what I do a lot with, with work wise, but I fucking work hard. <laughs> Yeah. And and then I don't pat myself on the back enough. I guess this can be like a time where I pat myself on the back, but that's why me and Chef work well together because he he works hard and he motivates me to work hard. He motivates me like fuck. He's the kind of local boy I was when I grew up, you know, and fuck, why not me? Yep. Why, why not, not me? me bro? So I'm like fuck, bro, fuck this. Like everybody started from somewhere, so why I cannot start? Like it's never too late to start. And it's it's dope that I found something that I love doing at 32, you know, and I couldn't I wouldn't take back any of my last my past any of it, because if it wasn't for it, I wouldn't be where I am today. <clears throat> yep, for sure, man. Well, we've been oh, last thing, bro. How did you come up your name of your company? Um, So I I honestly was going through a bunch of like different ways, but Originally, it was actually like it was gonna be like holo holo because that's what I was doing during COVID, right? Oh I was yeah, just ripping it everywhere. <laughs> so I was like, okay, it's gonna be something holo holo. And like, nah, people are gonna butcher that. They're gonna say it wrong, and that's gonna be a bigger pet peeve of me. Like if they're pronouncing it wrong. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go with my 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 last name is Kuali. So I was gonna go Ali Films, you know, like Chief Films. And, yeah, yeah. But again, when I get so it's funny when I get called by like any like telemarketer, they're like, is this Regan Kuali? I'm like, yo, I hang up real quick because I hate that they <laughs> pronounce it wrong. I'm like, yeah. So that's why I chose Ku, because Ku Ali'i. And when I looked up the word Ku, it had like to stand strong, to stand what you believe in. And I was like, fuck, that's what I'm doing right now. I believe that I'm going to be uh, more than a household name. Like I'm going to be a fucking world name videographer or whatever it is right storyteller yep. and yep. that's why i was like fuck and everybody but can't can't pronounce cool so that's yep. why i chose cool. i was like and it's, it's in cool my bro <laughs> yeah it is. and honestly like it's this probably the first time i'm it's going to be out there but i'm actually changing it it's oh really cool films, yeah cool films won't be cool films for very much longer but that will be announced very soon Imagine. that what let it, me know yeah bro. Like, yep. yeah it, it's it's gonna be a i'm excited I'm super excited. Hey, it's, to a, it's time to level up, bro. Maybe you outgrown the name. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that's why, like, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sad about like having to change it because it's I know the bigger picture, you know. And yep. Who is still going to be in there, but it's going to be something a little different. No, it's not going to be cool. like. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to, right, to, to announce it. But yeah, it <laughs> probably won't be announced for a little, like a like a month or two. <clears throat> okay. Well, we've been going for a, about an hour and I really appreciate you taking time out Thank and you, coming bro. on. I know, like you said, um, you're used to being behind the camera, but I feel like your story can inspire people. And like you said, why not me? Maybe somebody watching that can get that and do the same thing. Why not me, bro? Mm -hmm. We are local people from Hawaii that have just as much ambition, attitude mm -hmm. and uh, determination and work ethic than anybody as as much as anybody else on this planet but we have aloha yeah. and um that could be the 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 change and and people hearing that your is, story yeah that is the change that is yep. the change and and maui showed it and that's why I yep. like again i'm not trying to extend it more than it should be but and that's like after all that shit i have never been more proud to be hawaiian because to see that aloha spirit dude yep. without like it wasn't just hawaiian people it was everybody Yep. It was like the Aloha spirit was so infectious during that time that it spread everywhere. And uh, that was the most proud of being, and, that was probably the most, that was probably the time I was most proud to be Hawaiian. I mean, like yep. at that, like, like that's sick to see just the people of Hawaii gathered together, not knowing anybody and just fucking giving, you know, and, and yeah, super excited to, uh, to be able to do that in the next yep. week. <laughs> and it, it shows, right. And, and I always say, look at the map. And you see Hawaii, it's the tiniest speck, but that thing radiates aloha and that thing can get contagious just as much yeah. as anything else, Brian. Exactly. If it, if it can't happen with us, then it will never happen. So hey, thanks question. for coming on. Yo, what's up? <laughs>
Is that a super dry t-shirt you have on, or is it some? Is it the like you guys use that? Is that no, like no, no? This dry? is this is this is super dry. It's it's a, a cotton. Yeah, Defen okay, Roy. Like Shout that's out to Defen Roy. Like, yeah, I like the super high. That's, yep. that's even, like, that's I got I you, bro. Yep. Yeah, when you, you guys coming down in a few days, bro, just we'll stop by yeah. Chris's store. Yep. Dude, yep. I'm down. Yeah, I got you. A, this there one of their new ones, bro. Shout out to Defen Roy. I like Roy. it. Yep. I like Check it. them out. Sick. Yep. Yep. And um, yeah, we'll be seeing you soon. But where can people find you on Instagram or whatever platform you have personally? And um, where can people find you on social media? Um, basically, I oh, I only have Instagram. Um, I don't more time to manage anything else. Yeah, me I too. Bro. <laughs> um, but like, I I I had to choose one, which was Instagram. So you can go cool k u underscore films, or if you follow iPono Cafe, you can see all my shit from there too. So, um, but yeah, dude, like, I only got Instagram, so. I don't got time to worry about anything else. Yeah. And that's the only one. Yeah. You, cool films or, and I got some contact info on the, on there. If you're looking to get, you know, closer, you got to get in contact with me. It's all on my Instagram. <clears throat> all right on. And for us, it's the same, um, above the bridge podcast on Instagram, our YouTube channel and atbpod.com is our website. And my personal Instagram is daddy, daddy. Hi. Bro, daddy, 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 <laughs> bro. I appreciate you, man. I'm looking forward to seeing you this week, and yeah, hopefully you, you guys bro. can Same. come out to the district. And um, bro, I'm I'm excited to see where you take this because, bro, like you said, no cap, sky's the limit, and the work ethic and and passion, bro. It's it's cool to see somebody I know find their passion and living it, bro, and. I've met so many people and so few do it, bro. And and to 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 see you succeed at what you, what you love to do is is a trip, man. And, and it's um something a boy from Hilo is shooting for the moon and can't get hey, better we, than that, dude. <laughs> Hilo all the way, baby. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right on. Well, shock us for the camera, man. Yes, uh. Right on, bro. We're out. Shout out to the Artist Group Network. Aloha, brother. Yeah, boys.